Okay, this is just the continuation of um, this double integral. In our last class, we discussed about double integral over the rectangular region. What we did in our last class was that when we are given a, a double integral, like let's say one, two, let's say zero, three, for example, and we have x, y, dx, dy. So this is a rectangular region of integration. So what it means is, in this case, your x is from uh, one to two, right? So your lower limit for x, because always the inside integral is for inside differential, which means the limit for x is one to two, and limit for y is zero to three. So if I draw the graph of this, it is called, um, region of integration and which will be x equals to one to two. So this is your line. This is your x equals to one, x equals to two. And then this one is y is zero to three, y equal to zero, which is uh, here. And uh, let me use a different color. And y equals to three. So one, two, three there. So three, so you see, when you look at this um, inequality, what it means is X is greater than one and Y is less, uh, X is less than one, less than two. So that means X is greater than one and less than two. So this is the reason we are talking about. And for Y, it is greater than zero and less than three. So this is the reason that we are talking about. And clearly you can see that this is a rectangle, right? Now, Today we'll focus our attention on general reason, okay? Integral, integrals, double integral over general reason. Double integral over general reason. Okay, let us look at this uh, example one first and then we talk about that in a minute. Sorry, example six, evaluate the integral. You see the, you know, some of the limit involves variable. And if you want to draw the reason of integration, let us see what kind of reason we'll get. Reason of integration is going to be, so you see this y dy is inside, dy is for inside integral. That means y is lower limit is x squared, upper limit is x. And then the lower limit for x is zero and upper limit for x is one, one. So if I draw the graph of this function, how does it look like? Let's draw the graph. Okay, x equal to zero, which means this line because y axis is x equal to zero and x equals to one. So one is right there. x equals to one, okay? And now y is, so you see here, you can write that y equals to x square is the lower limit, y equal to x is the upper limit. So let us uh, draw the graph, y equal to x square is a parabola. This is your y equals to x square. And then y equals to x is uh, this line right here. This is your y equals to x. Now, the reason of integration is basically this part right here. You see, this one is a, not a rectangle. Okay, this is not a rectangle. this part right here, okay? And this kind of reason of integration, which is not rectangle, we call it general. It could be anything general, okay? One thing very important to remember, 
is that when there is a function, you know, y, then the limit can be the function of x. So there are two function here. One is um, two variable here. One is x, another is y. So if dy is inside differential, then the inside limit can be the function of x, function of the outside um, variable. Inside limit can be the function of outside variable. So it is not possible to have, let's say, y and y squared or y squared and y. That is not possible because y is there and you cannot have the same variable for, for that uh, dy, okay? Keep in mind. Here are three points to remember. The inside variable of integral can be the function of outside. The inside variable is y. So the limit can be the function of outside variable, which means limit can be the function of x. The outside integral must have constant limit. So remember, outside always should be a number. It cannot have variable. Keep in mind these two things. Now let us try um, evaluating this limit. So first let us take inside integral. Inside integral, which is x squared to x, x y squared. So because I can write x outside because we are talking about dy. So here, our y will be the variable. Therefore, I can consider I can take that x outside. Basically, I'll have y squared dy. So then it will be x. So integration of that will be y cubed divided by three, and this is for y equal to x squared to y equals to x. So that's going to give me x over three, and uh, here you will get y. Y is x, so that means x cubed minus x square raised to power three. So that's gonna give me x over three. I mean, x power four, well, I can write this as one over three. And when you multiply that, it's gonna be uh, x power four minus, this is x power seven. Now substitute the value, substituting value of inside integral. So you can complete that yourself. Okay, guys, try to complete it. So the inside integral is one over three, x raised to power four minus x raised to power seven dx. And now this is one variable um, integral actually, one over three, and that's gonna be x power five over five minus x power eight over eight raised to power zero to one. So that's gonna give me one over three and here one over five, one power five minus one power eight over eight minus uh, zero minus zero. So basically the answer will be, uh, this will be one over three times three over 40. So that's gonna give me one over 40 should be the answer. Okay. Now, one thing, let me ask you. So we know from the previous uh, discussion, previous class discussion that when we have, let's say one to two, three, let's say zero to three, for example, f of x, y, dx, dy, we can actually write this as we can switch the order of integration. So we can write this order from d, dx dy, change it into dy dx. And all you need to do is zero to three, one to two, we can do that. So this is called, what is the theorem called for this? It's called Fubini's theorem, right? This is Fubini's theorem. Now, my question to you is that, Let's say, let me just copy this example six. So we have x squared x zero to one, f of x, y, for example, dx, dy. So can I write this as 
0 to 1 x square to x dy dx. Can I do that? What is your answer for that? We cannot do this. Cannot do this. As a matter of fact, this double integral is not defined. Okay? There can be no variable in the outside integral. Keep in mind, no variable is allowed on the outside integral, a limit for the outside integral. So you cannot do that. So there is a way, if you want to change this into, you know, if you want to change zero to one, x squared to x, f, x, y, d, x, d, y, we can change this into dy dx, but, but the limit will be different, okay? So the limit is not just like switching it. So we should be, um, you know, we should use um, a method. We will learn that method in a minute, okay? And then we can switch them, but it will not just transform like before in the case of rectangular region of integration. So in the next example, we will learn how to switch when the, in, you know, when the integral involves the variable as its limit, how to switch the integral, how to switch the order of integration. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay, let's look at example. Um, example eight. Okay, so evaluate the integral. In this case, your inside integral is x to one e raised to power y square dy. Now, can you please find the integration of this? So if you're not able to solve it, then that's okay, not a problem because this is, there is no, uh, you know, exact formula that we can apply to evaluate this integral. So this integral cannot be evaluated exactly. Okay, so what we need to do is if you want to evaluate this integral, somehow if you, if you want to switch, if you're able to switch it dy into dx, now this will be pretty easy in, uh, eval to evaluate because with respect to x, e y square will be just constant. So this can be written as e y square and x to one and simply dx. And which means e y square and this will be x and uh, you know, this is one to x equals one to x. I mean, x equals to x to um, x equals to one. So it's that simple. So what we want to do here is that we want to switch the order of integration. Otherwise, this is not easy to evaluate. So let me write a few words here. The inside integral is impossible or difficult. Sometimes it will be impossible, sometimes difficult to evaluate. So but if we change the order of integration the integral can be can be easily evaluated okay so our goal is to um, evaluate the integral by switching the order of integration. 
So it means what we're going to do is changing order of integration x to 1, 0 to 1, ey square, oh sorry, yeah, ey square dy dx. We want to switch, we want to reverse the order. So that means we don't know what that will be. We, we have to find that out. This limit we need to find out. E is to power y square. So we just want to switch d this dy dx order into dx dy order. All we need to do is we need to figure out the limit. Okay. There are two methods to figure out the limit. Okay. To change the order of integration to uh, reverse the order of integration. So one, I call it algebraic method. Another, I call it geometric method. So I'm gonna do by both method for this example. And you tell me which one you like and I'll follow that for the next, okay? So algebraic method means, first of all, write down the reason of integration. So the reason of integration is, as you can see here, um, notice that the inside limit is for inside differential. So that means uh, given y from x to one and x from zero to one. So this is given, everyone is okay with that? Notice here the limit. Okay, so for y it is x to one and for it is x to zero. So that is given. Now you follow two step methods. So you combine them together. Okay, you just combine these two. So combine means write down in order. Okay, just list them in order. Which one is the smallest one here? Well, the smallest one is zero. Because notice that x is less than y, y is less than one, but zero is even less than x. So we can write this as zero is less than x, less than y and less than one. So just combine them together. You know how to put them in order. You learn how to put the numbers in order in your elementary school. Should not be a, an issue here, okay? Just put them in increasing order. Step one is done. Step two, now just split, okay, split. One time combine, split. Now, if you want to split it, so the thing is, you will get your x is zero to y. You see, x is zero to y. That's the one limit for x we already got. Now, to find the limit for y, remember, y is now, we try to, you know, we, we're trying to put the y outside integral. So outside must be constant. It cannot have variable guys. Outside integral must have constant limit. So what is the constant limit? What is the number, you know, number numerical values here is basically zero and one. So that's it. So we already figured out what is our limit. So limit for X is zero to Y. It is zero to Y and limit for y is zero to one, okay? And then we can evaluate this now. Any questions? So this one, some people find it a little bit tricky, but all you need to do is you combine them. What it means is put them in order. So you know how to put the numbers in order, which one is the smallest one, which one is the biggest one, just put them in order. And then always you look at the first three and split them. And then the outside integral is always number, just put the numbers here. So the inside integral can have the variable. That's it. Now, if you want to do the same thing, what, what is going on here in the algebraical method? What is going on here? Let us look at that geometrically, okay? So to look at this geometrically, let me just copy the reason of integration. So the given limit here is y from x, to one and x from zero to one. Let us draw the graph of this. Here, your boundary line is y equal to x to y equals to one. That's what it means. 
So let us draw the graph. Okay, now y equal to x, that means it is this line here. y equal to x. Now, next one is y equals to 1. So, y equals to 1 should be here. This is your line y equals to 1. Okay. Now, x equal to 0 means it's the y axis. So, this is your x equal to 0. And then x equals to 1. So, which is this. x equals to 1. So, basically, if you look at the limit, y is greater than x. So that means it should be greater than that and should be less than, y is less than one and greater than x is greater than zero and x is less than two. So basically this is the reason of integration. Okay. That is the reason of integration. Now to, uh, to figure out the limit, what you can do is, earlier in this case, it is given that y equals to x to y equals to one. So it was given like that. Okay, we started with y equals to x to y equals to one. Now we switch, it was given like this. Starting is y equal to x and ending y equals to one and x equal to zero. Now, the same reason we want to look at from different perspectives. So instead of that, we want to look at from that perspective, okay? From this perspective, let us see what happens. So we can write this, x starting from zero to starting from y, because this one is x equals to y or y equal to x. So this is your limit, okay? You can think this way, x start from zero, this is your x equal to zero, and goes all the way up to this line, which is x equals to y. That's one limit, limit for x. Now, limit for y, let us, you know, let me just copy that uh, question again. So the question is uh, x to one and zero to x, e y square d y dx. Now, just by looking at the graph, what we figure out is that, so the limit for x, you see, we switch the order, limit for x is zero to y, so zero to y, and limit for y must be number, it cannot have variable. So the number means the lowest possible value for y is zero, as you can see, because y going all the way from here to there. So the lowest possible value for y is zero, and the highest possible value for the value for y is one. So zero to one. That's it. Does that make sense? And which method do you like? You choose that. Anyway, we switch the order. In both cases, we got the same limit here, zero to y for x and for y, zero to one. Now, changing the order of integration, we get that. Now let us um, evaluate the uh, inside integral. Inside integral is zero to y, e y square dx. So I, I'm gonna write e y square outside because that's gonna be constant now, we treat x as our variable. So I can write this way, which means e y square and integration of dx is simply x. And so it is x from zero to x up to y. So it will be uh, e y square. And so that's gonna be y minus zero. So you're gonna get y e y square. So let us substitute the value. Substituting value of inside integral. So we're gonna get 
0 to 1, the inside integral, you see this part we already calculated, which is y e raised to power y square dy. Okay, now you can handle this. This is a piece of cake for you guys, okay? You can do it easily. I want you to complete that yourself, okay? I think you can use either the uh, integration by parts method, and I think even easier method would be substitution method. Right, so your final answer is going to be half e minus one. Any question? Uh, okay, so we already learned a method how to change the uh, order of integration even if some limit involves variable. Now we're going to try one more question just for fun, okay? So this time we want to try, um, let's say this is, let's say example eight. Okay, let's try example nine, sorry. Example eight, we just had a bow. So example nine. So I want you to uh, work on this problem. Okay, let's try this just for fun. Again, in this example, <clears throat> you see if you start with inside integral, so you're gonna get e raised to power y up to two and one over ln x dx. So how do you evaluate this integral here? Substitution method doesn't work. Integration by parts doesn't work. Another simple antiderivative method doesn't work. So um, evaluating this limit is not possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, again, writing the same logic here as we have written there, same thing, okay? So the the language is here, the same thing. The inside integral is impossible or difficult to evaluate, but if we change the order of integration, the integral can be evaluated easily. So all we want to do is we want to switch the integration. So we need to reverse the order of integration because the inside integral is not easily integrable or impossible. Integrable or impossible to integrate. So blah, 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 whatever that language, you can just copy language from the previous one. 
So all we need to do is we want to do this e um, raised to power y one, I mean two, and this is zero to ln two, uh, one over ln x dx dy, we want to switch the order and one over ln x dy dx. That's all we want because if we somehow bring this dy inside, then this um, one over ln x can be considered as constant. We can take it outside. We don't have to do the integration. All we need to do is just integrate dy. So it's that simple, okay? So the question is, what will be the limit? Okay, that's all we need to find. Once you are able to find the limit, then this problem will be pretty easy for you guys. Um, so to change the limit, I mean, to reverse the order of integration. So to change order of integration, what is given here is your x is given to be e raised to power y all the way up to two. Okay, x limit is e raised to power y to two and y limit is, limit for y is zero to ln two. Okay, unlike in the previous example where all the limits involve the either simple variable or you know, or number, in this case, the very, I mean, the limit involved the exponential function as, as well as this, you know, logarithm here. But it's still, all we need to do is we need to put them in order. If you cannot compare the order just like that, well, you can do a couple of things. Here, e raised to power y, so let us take ln both sides, okay? taking logarithm both, all the sides, what happened? If you cannot compare just like that, all you need to do is compare the numbers and quantity there. That's all you need to do. And sometimes if you cannot compare easily, you can use your high school algebra. I think, I think if you take logarithm, uh, that will make life easy. So it will be ln e raised to power y, ln x, and ln 2. Now you can compare this because ln e y will be y, ln x, ln 2. So we have this and we have 0, y, ln 2. So now compare this two. Okay, combine. Which one is the smallest one? Well, it is 0, right? So here, y is the smallest one from this one, but in from, from this inequality, we see that zero is the smallest. And then y, then ln x, then ln two. Just put them in order, as you would have done in, uh, in your elementary school, put in the, all the numbers in order. That's it. And you split it, you're almost done. Now split. Zero, y, ln x, okay, and see here, y now has, uh, has variable limit. And so the x must have, ln x must have constant only. So the constant num value or number is zero and ln two, that is the only possibility is there. That's it, but remember, we are looking for the limit for x, not ln x, right? We're looking for the limit for x, not ln x. So how can you change this ln x into x? Again, using the high school. So taking, exponentiating all side. Exponentiating. You're gonna get e raised to power zero, e raised to power ln x, e raised to power ln two. So that's gonna give you e raised to power zero is one. This is simply x, this is two. Look at that, such a simple um, limit we got, right? So let us substitute the value here. What we notice here is that 
our limit for y is zero to ln x. And limit for x is zero to two, that's it. This one is, this one is uh, really interesting, isn't it? We are able to use the high school uh, knowledge that you have already learned in your high school algebra or pre-calculus. Yeah. All right. So after this, I leave it to you guys. So what you, all you need to do is uh, find, evaluate the inside integral. which is zero to ln x, uh, one over ln x. You can take that ln x outside because we are treating y as a variable. So that's gonna give me um, one over ln x and that's gonna give me y. So y from zero to ln x. So that's gonna give me one over ln x and this will be um, y means ln x minus zero. Oh. It's simple one. Oh, that's nice. You see, we just got one there. Now substituting the value, value of inside integral. So you'll get zero to ln two. And this guy is simply one dy. Okay, so this one will be y. And this is zero to ln two. So your answer is going to be ln two minus zero, which is simply ln two. Any question guys? Oh, it is not ln two. Oh, sorry guys, I copied the wrong, um, I copied the wrong uh, limit there. So limit is actually two because we are talking about this here. So this one is two. I copied the wrong thing. This is uh, simply two. So oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, okay, guys. I come on. This is actually dx, right? So this is. Um, Inside integral is this part right here. This is one. So zero to two, one dx. Okay, one, zero to two, one dx. Zero or one? Oh, come on, one, this is one to two. Okay, I'm very bad at copying the things guys. Sorry guys, so this one is actually one. You see e raised to power zero is one. We calculated that. So this is going to be not zero, it's one to two. And so this is one to two. And so that's gonna be uh, integration is x. Your one to two, that's gonna give you two minus one, which is one. This is your answer, one. That is the final answer. Any question? Okay, I know you, some of you might have um, confusions right now a little bit in changing the order of integration. Um, but, you know, with little practice, I think you will be okay with this one. It's not that easy, I agree with you. But with little practice, then you'll be able to handle. There should be no big issue. And the last question, from this section is uh, example seven. Let's try that. Guys, you already know how to uh, draw the um, reason of integration for both rectangular reason and uh, general reason. And you already know how to change the order of integration. Uh, I think you will be able to handle this example seven easily. Uh, let's try it together. And then after some, and after a few steps, then I leave it to you, okay? Example seven, find the volume 
under the surface z equals f of x y equals 6 x plus 2 y square and above the region r enclosed by the parabola y equals x square and the line y, x plus y equals to 2. Hint, sketch the region of integration. Let us sketch the region of integration here. To sketch the region of integration, what is given is above the reason are enclosed by the parabola x equals to y square and x plus y equals 2. So these are the two curve given. So they describe the reason of integration. So all we need to do is draw this two graph. y equal to x square. Okay, this is your y equal to x square graph. No, 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 sorry, x equal to y square. I'm saying x equals to y square. That's the graph. You see, when we have y equal to x square, the graph will be like this. So x square is there, and this is your y. Okay, y is right in the middle and the curve, the parabola is like this. When we say x equals to y square, the same thing happens. But if you don't know how to draw the graph, the easiest one would be you just, you know, plug in a couple of values. Let's say if you want to draw x equals to y square graph. So what you can do is y is your independent variable. So here y, suppose y equal to zero and x equal to x equals to, um, zero, so you'll have zero, zero. So the point is zero, zero. When y equals to one, x equals to one, so you'll have one, one. When y equals to minus one, x is also equals to my, uh, x equals to one. So that's gonna be minus one and one. And so when it is two, this will be four. This is four and two. If it is negative two, this will be four again. So four and negative two and so on. So you just draw the graph, you're gonna get that. Now to draw the graph of X plus Y equals to two, it's simply a straight line, right? I trust that everybody know how to draw the graph of this. So this is, let's say one, two. So it goes all the way. This is your graph y equals two minus x. This is y equals two minus x. This is the graph. Now the reason of integration is this part. I trust that everybody know how to figure that out. This is the reason of integration. Now, what is this point of intersection, anybody? This one is the origin, of course, this is zero, zero. We know that. I want you to find what is this and what is that. I trust that everybody know how to find that. Point of intersection is this. Okay, now let's find the volume. Volume is given by double integral over reason r, the function fxy, either dx dy or dy dx. So we know that, right? Now, which order will make life easy here? That's all we need to figure out, okay? Okay. 
So in this case, the outside integral, making outside integral as constant is easy. Okay, here, choosing dx, dy order seems to be easier because the upper boundary changes from x equals 1 but left boundary is the same. Throughout the region of integration. So we'll choose this dx dy order. So that means if I choose dx dy order, so volume is 6xy, 6x plus 2y square dx dy. Now limit for x, limit for y. So y must be constant only. What is the minimum possible value of y in this region of integration? Somebody tell me, what is the minimum possible value of y? This is the minimum point all the way this lower limit, which is negative two, thank you. Yeah, negative two. So notice that dy is outside integral. Therefore, it must be, you know, the limit must be a number and the lowest possible number for that is negative two and the highest possible number is one. So the limit for y is done. Now, limit for x, so when we say limit for x, notice that we are talking about this stripe right there. So what is the lowest possible value for x here is just a curve. And this curve is x equals y squared, that's the curve. So lowest possible value here is uh, y squared, okay? x equals to y squared and all the way up to this guy right here. That is the upper limit, you see? That is the upper boundary which is again y equals to, well, y equals to two minus x, but you need to express that in terms of x. So this means x equals to um, what? Two minus y, okay. So this graph is x equals to two minus y. So this is two minus y, okay, that's it. Now you know how to evaluate the integral. Take a few minutes and try to evaluate this integral. Okay, doing this all the way to the other side. Let's go here.
Okay, it has lots of algebraical calculation, not difficult, but involves lots of algebraical calculation. So three. Guys, this is what I got, 99 over two. It's all calculation, a lot of algebraical calculation and numerical calculation. And uh, try yourself and let me know whether you got the same answer, okay? So this section is done. I trust that you'll be able to handle this double integral. Um, whether it's given, uh, whether the double integral is given over the rectangle region or whether it is given over the general region. So we have done both. In our next class, we're gonna uh, look at probability, which is a, you know, statistics concept, okay? We will look into probability and then the um, mean, median, standard deviation, all these things using the integration, okay?